Hello students, Eric Maggotson here. Let's do a comprehensive video on the Team Lab for implementing a help desk solution for small business, okay? Now, let me be clear, you're really focused on creating solutions for a singular small business, okay? Now, what that means is when you think about designing and developing a help desk solution, it can be just for that company, okay? Now, the other side is you could look, your team and you could look more forward as what would I need as a help desk solution where I could manage many clients. So there might be some of you who are in fact, you know, looking to maybe start your own consulting business. And this of course is a tool that you would need. When I had my own consulting business, um, a programmer that I had working for me developed at that time, which was fairly new, a web-based database that we could access from our phones, that we could access um, you know, from work. Uh, it was great because a lot of our clients were, were of course off our site, right? So I wanted a solution that when the technician was on site with the client, they could go ahead and you know, make notes and put things in, you know, put in hours, et cetera, and then we actually used it to create comprehensive billing. Okay, but for this solution, and you know, this being a college class, we're just looking for ideas of what might be available. And of course, starting with a Google search, you know, what's available in the way of help desk? How much is that going to cost? Okay. You know, do we need something that has a monthly cost or could we do something like build our own with Access or MySQL, Oracle's probably overkill, you know, MS SQL, PHP, you know, and again, like I previously said, Excel's really pushing it, okay? Because that's going to be an Excel spreadsheet. We're not going to be able to really, you know, do a lot with that, okay? But it's not to say you can't do programming in Excel, you know, and, and create something. I'm just suggesting it's not the greatest idea. You know, web forms. So as we look at integrating our database, you know, we, we could use Google Forms. Of course, that makes a Google Sheet, okay? And the problem with that is then how do we search that? Well, we certainly could, you know, search it for solutions to previous problems so that we don't spend time and hours researching, trying a solution when there's already been a solution done by a different tech previously for that customer or perhaps for another customer. You know, just yesterday I installed the May 2020 update for Windows 10 and in the process started having this funky thing where I got this white bar across my screen um, every time I opened up uh, a browser. Didn't matter what browser it was. So I knew it was probably an operating system thing or uh, a, my GPU driver. And in fact, it turned out that it's a unique thing. Windows 10, when there's dual screens and these, you know, and the stars align perfectly, which mine had, I guess, lucky me. And it ended up that I just needed to install an updated uh, driver an NVIDIA driver and the problem was gone, right? But realistically, that took about an hour and a half of research and trying different things that weren't working to finally find the solution. We don't wanna to have to do that each and every time, okay? So little knowledge inside of the assignment. Okay, so, you know, Office 365 forms, PHP front end. Remember, we can also use an access <coughs> front end. So we can design really nice forms and access and then, you know, link a database to that as well. And again, perhaps we, we want to start with access. You know, access in this case might be a good idea. However, what's the disadvantage of access is that it is local, right? And then we need to talk about the other access, which is how we ac access it. And this is where the cloud can come in, you know. So what could we do in Google and Azure and AWS? What could we do with an existing solution that's already built? What's going to be the cost? And again, let me be clear here. If you go with a, with a pre-built system, make sure there's a trial so that you can actually implement it. I'm not looking for documentation saying this is what we do. Don't care. I'm looking to analyze a solution that you and your team came up with and implemented, 
Okay. Now, realistically, to you know, to do a quick access database isn't going to take you that long at all. We also got to look at how we're going to back up the data, so we don't want to lose the database. Um, you know, it becomes invaluable. Also, when I was at Columbia Aircraft, that's what we used to figure out where our customers, i.e., end users, were having issues, and how we could then either put in new systems to reduce the cost of help desk or how we could do training to reduce the cost or you know find out that we've worked on this machine three times in the past month and it's five years old maybe it's time for a replacement and when you have all of that data to give to management that's when you get things done when you go into management and say hey you know we want to just do this new thing and well why you know um, management today has grown up with technology. So it's not this deal where you can go in and bamboozle them. You got to have the data and a help desk solution provides that factual data, right? It's, I find it always interesting that help desk is the entry point into IT. You know, a lot of people stay in help desk, don't get me wrong, but it's the entry point into IT when in fact, it is the focal point of IT. This is where we do customer service and we need to do customer service to the best of our ability to make sure people have productive technology in which to use to meet whatever the business's mission is. So, you know, SaaS service providers, so, you know, open source options, pay to play, et cetera, you might find something there. In the system though, we always wanna be looking at the big W's, who, what, where, when, how, and why, you know. So who needed the help? What was the problem? When do they need it fixed? Where is the problem? Why, how, and then we go back with, you know, who fixed it? When did they fix it? You know, so there's the other side of the equation. How was it fixed? And all of that, right? And so. If you think about it, one help desk ticket has a lot of information in it. It's not just, hey, here's the date and here's the problem, okay? So things we need to know, is it urgent? Meaning, are they down? Are they not productive at all? Is it high? Why is it normal? Low, of course. Is it informational, non-critical? By the way, we want to put information in there as well. So if we proactively fix something, we want to put information in the database, in the help desk application as to what we did, right? Documentation, documentation, documentation. That's why in this class, I'm having you document stuff so tremendously. And really, um, I will make a point of showing you the massive amounts of documentation we have at Westside on the network. So who, who's the client? Who's the end user? What the problem statement, right? So main categorization, is it hardware? Is it software? Is it, I don't know, uh, you know, device type, laptop, smartphone, desktop, router, switch, et cetera. That way we can query those, you know, we want a model, we want a name. This is another reason why all of our equipment has some sort of standard naming convention, right? So we can just search on that. So if we have, you know, um, MMIM DSK 000024. We want to be able to go search that desktop and see everything that's been done on it. Okay. We want to query and be able to do a query that have we done more than four help desk requests for a, a single user in a month? Have we done four self uh, help desk requests on a single piece of equipment? you know, so that we can start focusing and becoming proactive instead of reactive. So software type, third party, in-house, when, so priorities. Um, you know, we have to think if this is small and we've got a bunch of help desk things that are priority, we want to then communicate back. How is the person who submitted the help desk ticket going to know that the ticket got submitted and what went on? and when it's going to be fixed. So dates, you know, get relevant timestamps. Again, timestamps of when was it submitted? When did we respond? When did it get fixed? When did it get closed? Remember, we wanna close the loop with some sort of satisfaction thing. Now, not every help desk is gonna get a, on a one to five star ratio, you know, 
but we definitely want the ability to do that. We wanna be able to prove to management that our customer service is good. Why is it a provency? Is it regulation? Why are we fixing it? Is it down? Whatever the case may be. Again, documentation. I think I've kicked on that enough. Who will? So, you know, content expert, you know, has experience with the problem software. So again, who fixed it? And if they spent a few hours doing the research, we may want to know who that is so we can go back and ask them further questions. Escalation, uh, you know, what's a level one tech? What's a level two? What's a level three? When do they need to get involved? When do we need to involve the hardware manufacturer? So these are ideas that should be included in your solution, okay? So I really look forward to seeing what you all, you and your teams come up with to meet that challenge of a help desk solution. Take care.